Hello there, yes, just wanted to do a quick review of a fantastic little upgrade you can get for your ZX Spectrum Plus 2. Um, I'm sure you remember these things, uh, Spectrums, very popular in the UK, 1986 this particular model, but they went back further than that for the, uh, the 48K model. This is the one I had, uh, so this one has always been my favourite. Back then we loaded software with these, cassette tapes, uh, they were absolutely horrible. You have to rewind the tapes, put it in, press play, do that, and start loading it. And it makes a horrible whiny, screechy sound, and that's if it loads at all. Most of the time you get an R tape loading error message or something along those lines. So, an upgrade was developed, not at the time. This is after for us saddos that still like to play about with these 30 year old computers, called the Div IDE. This allows us to add on a card reader so that we can instantly load games from a memory card like a compact flash. You get it in two parts. You get the interface itself which plugs into the expansion port of the Spectrum um, and then you need a, a card reader bit which then plunks in on top of it. It gives you an ugly circuit board sticking outside of your Spectrum. That is my first gripe with it. It doesn't come with any kind of casing or niceties. It's, it's an external board with chips and everything on it, so you're worried about frying it with static electricity to start with. There are some people that have made some cases for it, um, but that's separate, or you have to build your own, uh, or whatever, but, uh, but there we go. Um, so I'm going to plug this into Spectrum now and show you that it's a lot better than using these stupid things. Okay, so there she is plugged into the uh, the back of the ZX Spectrum. The um, Divide in now, we turn on the Spectrum and we get this instead, a Divide E screen showing that it's picked up the SanDisk module and then you press any key and then it actually boots you into 48K mode which is um, a little bit different. You seem to lose the, the 1 to 8K screens which is a bit of a shame really. Um, I believe there are some dip switches and some settings and firmware flashes and all sorts you can do with it which gets it back but I'm just reviewing this on a default configuration. Um, but here we are in 48k mode. Despite being in 48k mode you don't lose the 1 to 8k abilities. If you know the 1 to 8k spectrum well enough you'll know it's, it does have extra abilities with sound and... Anyway, there's a little button on the divide itself and if I press that I then get this menu come up which is a disk browser which is now looking at the stuff from the compact flash card that's plugged into it. Uh, the great thing about the compact flash card is that it does use the normal fat file system so that you can just pop it in the, the card into a reader on the PC and copy any snapshot files, tape files that you download off the internet from stuff such as World of Spectrum, it's fine. There are incompatibilities with the card, it doesn't seem to handle TZX on this particular firmware so I generally go for .Z80 files or uh, TAP files. Uh, TZX, SNA, nah, it, it don't want to know. Anyway, um, this is what was on my card when I got it from, um, I think it was Ami Bay. Um, but anyway, there's a uh, few games on there. A um, few incompatibilities, particularly with 1 to 8K games, um, which take advantage of extra sound on this. Um, but basically, it is it is as simple as just using the cursor keys to select, press return on a Z80 file, and give it a second, and voila! Or way to say Monty starts up, so yeah, let's start the game. And look at that, we are in a game instantly on a ZX Spectrum. How awesome is that? I have absolutely no idea what the controls are to this game. I usually plug in the uh, the joystick, but I haven't done that. But uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, the game's loaded. But look at the bottom of the screen there, that's not how it should look. Those squares, that's wrong. Um, major, you know, and it's, a lot of them crash as well. Just try and bubble bobble early. It crashed after I select the controls. The 48k software seems to work better. Um, I'm just going to reset the spectrum again now and just show you that. Once again, hit the button and off it goes. Um, yeah, let's try. Uh, yeah, bubble bobble 128k version with the extra awesome theme tune this game has. So. Uh, let's choose the controls. Notice how quick they load, it's absolutely fantastic. That is the great thing about it. Uh, select Sinclair, will it work? I 
think the answer is a resounding no, it's just crashed. Which is a shame. Well, if I had Bubble Bubble on the tape, yeah, there we go, it just rebooted and stuff. Um, if I had Bubble Bubble on a cassette tape, it would load and it would work on this computer. So, yeah, a few, few problems with the div ID with that. I alienate works, no problem. There we go, bang, straight up there. That's keyboard control. Um, and. Well, not stuck yet. Yeah. And off we go. Or not. Well, I'm really not having much luck with this one. There's afterburner here. The tap files work different. You press return on a tap file and then you actually have to do a load command, which, as you'll know, is load speech mark, speech mark on the thingy. And then it fires up and there's that burn it. And up it comes. Horrible conversion from the arcade, this version, but uh, what can we do? Okay, and there we go. There's, there's Afterburner playing around on the big spectrum. Um, I should say it was a horrible conversion from the um, arcade. I might have been a bit harsh there. Um, the control actually feels quite nice on this game. But that's that's the point of Div idea. You know, you're loading games up straight away, but you're not going to get 100% compatibility, particularly with the 128K software. Maybe with a different... Oh, I've been killed. Maybe with a different firmware, things will run a little nicer with it, I don't know. But this is how I how I got mine out of the box. So that's the Div ID. Um, if you have a Spectrum, I think you should definitely get it, despite the incompatibilities of some software. Um, try and download tap file but software, it works better than snapshot stuff. Um, as you can see here, I have absolute library of games on this uh, card. It's just a 512 meg card. It's pretty much more space than you'll ever need for Spectrum games. You can see the sort of size of them, they're, they're really small files, each game, and yeah, you, you, you will absolutely breathe a new life into the Spectrum. Um, it beats um, emulation because you're using a real system, but then you're not having to worry about and messing about with the uh, cassette tapes and waiting about 10 minutes for everything to load. So, yeah, absolutely recommend it. Have a look on uh, retro computer forums, people selling them eBay, that kind of thing. Get yourself one for your Spectrum. It works on every Spectrum, not just the 128K.